So we have got the requirement. We have prioritized the requirement. Now we give this requirement to my delivery team or to the team members to execute. My team members gonna create and start delivering the requirement. So when we start doing the work, I need to trace the requirement, whether I am able to deliver that work, whatever customer has given to me. By the end of six months, did they get everything, whatever they asked for? So there's something called requirement traceability. And we create a traceability structure. What is it? This is a traceability structure for software project. So we typically say requirement traceability metrics. We have project name, blah, blah, blah. And each requirement has an ID. A requirement has a unique specification number so that I can say, okay, this requirement, is it being delivered or not, right? So each requirement has to have some kind of unique reference point. So we give a requirement ID. And it can have sub requirement. For example, a registration page should be for a registration page for vendor, a customer, or for a admin user. So there are three registration page which we need to make. So there could be sub ID or sub use cases. And we say, okay, for vendor, for um, admin, and for a customer registration, we write some small description. This is, and who has asked for this requirement? This is asked by customer one, his name, et cetera. So we write that, okay? So this is at the requirement gathering phase when we go out and do workshops, when we go out and do interviews, we fill this metric, still this part. After that, somebody designed the entire system Somebody says, let's do a high level architecture or design document. If it is a requirement like we need to create a colony or, or some residential place wherein there has to be a swimming pool, there has to be multi-story buildings and there should be bungalows, then we write those requirements. And then some architect gonna create that kind of a design document. So there is a phase called design. In if that architect write, okay, this, okay, registration page, I have written it in this design here in this particular uh, paragraph. So he says, para 1, 1.1, here is this requirement which I have addressed. Para number 1.2, I have addressed this requirement. So he write here, okay, this requirement I have addressed in one section 1.2, section 1.3, 1.5. So architect also needs to gather and ensure that all the requirements are catered to in the architect design or that blueprint if we are talking construction, okay? And then in software, we also have low level design, which is, you know, um, the detailed design, which uh, before somebody does the coding. Um, and let's talk about construction. You would have somebody making it, developer doing it. So some somebody who's writing it or making it. So then you would say, okay, is this done? Is it constructed or not? So what is the construction status? So then yeah, it is constructed. AI yeah, construction building number 1.1 is this. Building number 2.0 is this. So we give a number to those buildings or those places and we say, yeah, these requirements are met here. Uh, testing has to be done. And then customer also does testing based on the requirement which they have done. So the customer, when they come and do the inspection, that's called acceptance testing. So customer would come and say, where is the swimming pool which I told you about? So then you would, he would go and check the swimming pool. Yeah, it is available. Is this same specification which I told you? So he would check the specification, the height, the feet and width. And then he would say, yeah, the, the swimming pool is fine. What about the conference room? Is this the same specification? So these are acceptance testing. So what is happening from the inception of the requirement till the delivery of the requirement, I keep on writing whether it is being done or not. So tracing the requirement from the start till they are delivered, this 
document called requirement traceability matrix. It's a live document. When I say live, what does it mean? Entire project life cycle, I keep on updating it. So everybody updates it till I deliver those product or services. So I ensure I use a requirement traceability matrix to ensure requirements are delivered till the end. Questions? We good? Yeah, so I just, uh, I just want to understand that high level design where you put a one point two one point two. Yeah. Yes. Say it again, Anurag. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so at the high level design, right? You have yeah. mentioned one point two, one point three. Right. I measured it how like I like I just skipped it here. So why so okay. one point two and one point three? So a high level designer guy gonna create a design document, right? He would create what is the software he or she gonna use, what is hardware which is being used, and then he would write, okay, registration page should be of this type this registration page should be of this type and so on. So an architect is going to design an architect diagram or a high-level design diagram. So here we just mention the section numbers of that diagram, that document. We don't create a... It would just refer the sections that this requirement is getting catered here. For example... Okay. Uh, yeah, for example, there are non-functional requirements like extensibility or uptime. Then he would say hardware is this specification. So if there is a requirement like there has to be concurrent users of 100 users at any point of time, he would mention that somewhere that system is designed to handle a load of 100 concurrent users. Then I would say para number this matters to this requirement. Got it? Yeah, I am. Thanks. Good. 